Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are diving into an exciting topic, wooden filaments and bumble app printers. With Christmas just around the corner, it's the perfect time to explore filaments that bring a natural wooden look and texture to your prints. You may have already heard about Bumble App's new wooden filament released just three weeks ago, but how does it stack up against the competition? To find it out, I gathered wooden filaments from four different brands and we are putting them head to head to see how they perform. We will examine how do the results compare across the different brands, can these filaments really achieve a convincing wood-like finish or are they just brown PLA? Which filament stands out in terms of quality, surface texture and that authentic wooden feel? Along the way I will share slicer settings, compare the prints in detail and give you some practical tips to save time and money. To wrap things up we will even test the filaments in the AMS, mixing them into a single multicolor print for some extra fun. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we dive in, let's clarify what wooden filament actually is. In most cases, it's PLA infused with a certain percentage of wood powder. The proportion, particle size and type of wood used can greatly influence the filament's color, texture and even smell. Naturally, these variations also affect printing behavior, but more on that in a moment. Now let's meet the challengers for today's test. The first one is the Sunlo Real Wood Filament PLA. It has 20% recycled wood powder and I bought 1 kilogram for about 22 bucks. The next one is the Isenmate Wooden Filament PLA Plus. Again, the watt powder is about 20% and I bought 1 kilogram for 27 bucks. Then we have the Amalan Walnut Wood PLA. Here it differs a little bit where you look up the wood powder proportion. It differs between 15 to 30%. I also bought 1 kilogram for 26 bucks. And then we have the Bamboo Wood Filament. Here we have no information about the proportion. One kilogram is about 28 bucks. To compare these filaments, we need a suitable test model. I opted against the Christmas themed decoration since it's too seasonal. But don't worry, I will share some festive designs later on. For the direct comparison, I choose something more versatile, a vase. I found this beautiful spiral vase design on Maker World created by Butterbuff09 and I absolutely love it. The model features plenty of edges and corners, making it ideal for testing print quality, surface finish and whether the filaments truly deliver that wooden touch. Let's start with the printer setup. I'm using a Bumble Lab X1 Carbon, equipped with a 0.4mm nozzle and a textured pie plate for all prints. Let's load our model from Maker World into Bumble Studio. There are a few parameters in the process settings that I can recommend to change for better print quality. Make sure you have the advanced settings enabled. We start at the strength tab. Set the top and bottom surface pattern to concentric. I always use this pattern for cylindrical objects. For sparse infill pattern, I use gyrate. While not critical for our thin ways, this pattern avoids layer crossings and prints quicker compared to others. Therefore, this pattern is the setting of my choice for decoratives. In quality tab, under section advanced, change the order of the walls to outer inner. This improves the position of the outer walls. However, it slightly reduces overhang performance, which isn't an issue for our waste design. Now we slice the model and display the travel path. As we see, the travel lines, which are colored blue, crisscross the waste interior, increasing the risk of stringing. Note the travel time would be 2 hours now. To minimize the outer wall crossings, activate avoid crossing walls and set the maximum detour length to 300mm. Up to a path length of 300mm, the print head's movements are now redirected as far as possible so that the outer walls are not crossed. Slice again. Now the crossings inside the waist are almost eliminated. The travel time increases by 20 minutes, which is approximately 16%. But the overall print time only rises by 4%, a trade-off I almost always make. Now I switch the color scheme to speed view. You will notice that the print speed will rise significantly, especially in the vase's lower region. Over the whole model, the speed fluctuates between 42 and 159 mm per second for the outer wall. These speed changes result in inconsistent filament temperatures as the filament is pressed through the nozzle at a different speed. And this temperature difference can have a negative effect on the homogeneity of the surface. To address this, reduce speeds for outer walls to 120 mm per second and inner walls to 200 mm per second in the speed tab. Further, we increase the overhang speed. 
I double the overhang speed till 50% to 100mm per second, between 50 and 75 we use 80mm per second and 60mm per second between 75 and 100%. Now slice again and the speeds are now much more consistent. For the filament we will start with generic PLA. The first filament we will try comes from Sun Lu. The recommended print temperatures match with the settings for generic PLA. But I change one other parameter in the filament settings. I slow down the maximum volumetric flow to 8 cubic millimeters per second. This parameter more or less controls the global print speed. Whenever I'm not happy with the surface quality of a new filament, I start to reduce this value. It increases print time, but most of the time the quality improves significantly if you just print slower. I can already see the comments accusing me of being clueless with this approach. Well, you're absolutely right, I'm just a simple user, but hey, it works perfectly for me. Slice once more and the speeds now range between 81 and 106 mm per second across the entire model, ensuring consistent results. To sum it up, for decorative prints, aim for homogeneous speeds and minimize outer wall crossings. These changes increased the total print time from 9 hours and 5 minutes to 9 hours and 42 minutes, a small price to pay for improved quality. All set, let's print. Let's get started with the filament from Sunlo. Very nice, they used a plastic spool, which means there shouldn't be any issue when using the filament with the AMS. As for the texture, the surface feels rough compared to standard PLA. You can also see this visually, although my video camera struggles a bit to capture it clearly. However, we will take a closer look at the final results later with photos. My macro lens will probably do a better job here. Other than that, there's not much else to say. It's 1.75mm and neatly wound on the spool. Before we start printing, I'm going to dry the filament. This is recommended in several forums as wood particles tend to absorb moisture which can negatively impact print quality. After 6 hours in the dryer, the moisture volume dropped drastically to 30%. Alright, let's print the first ways. Note, I will leave the door of the printer open. As far as I know, this is suggested when printing PLA. And here it is, our first ways printed with wooden filament. The next candidate is the Eisen made wooden filament PLA+. Plus. I was pleasantly surprised when I opened the box, they also used a plastic spool. Taking a closer look at the filament itself, you can clearly see a rough surface. There is a noticeable difference compared to the Sunlow filament. It feels and looks quite nice. As before, I placed the spool in the dryer for 6 hours before start printing. The recommended print speed for this filament is between 30 and 70 mm per second. With a printing temperature range of 190 to 220 degrees Celsius, the process settings in Bumper Studio remain the same as before but I made a few adjustments to the filament temperatures. I set the maximum nozzle temperature to 220 degrees Celsius, the initial layer to 210 and reduced the temperature for all other layers to 205 degrees Celsius. When started the print I noticed material oozing from the nozzle during travel moves. To resolve this issue I stopped the print, enabled retraction and started again. Retraction pulls the filament back during travel moves, effectively solving the problem. Moving on to the next brand, Amolen. Once again, they've opted for a plastic spool, which is great to see. When examining the filament up close, you can clearly notice the textured rough surface. I really like the dark tone compared to the other filaments. It seems like a great option for mixing with the other ones. Again, I tried the filament for 6 hours before printing. Finding detailed information about the recommended print speed was a bit tricky. The spool itself only mentions temperature settings and the official website doesn't provide any speed guidelines. However, an image I found suggested a recommended range of 30 to 60 mm per second. The process settings remain unchanged, but I made some adjustments to the filament settings. As with the previous filaments, I set the maximum nozzle temperature to 220, the initial layer to 210 and the subsequent layers to 205 degrees Celsius. Since the Amazon description mentioned a higher wood content, I reduced the maximum volumetric flow to 5 cubic millimeters per second. And for this filament, I opted not to use retraction. Due to the slower print speed, the total print time increased significantly to 11 hours and 32 minutes. To be honest, I didn't test printing faster with this brand. 
the result turned out very well and since sprint time isn't a major concern for me, I didn't feel the need to experiment further. Now for the main contender, the new wooden filament from Bamboo. As expected, it comes on a plastic spool and upon close inspection you can clearly see the rust surface on the filament consistent with the other wooden filaments. Following Bamboo's strong recommendation on their website, I will dry the filament at 60 degrees for 7 hours before beginning the print. In Bumpo Studio, make sure the filament profile is enabled in the slicer options, as we would like to use the Bumpo PLA wood filament settings. For consistency, I will use the same process settings as with the other brands. Additionally, I will reduce the maximum volumetric flow to 8 cubic millimeters per second. And here it is, the last of our four vases. Let's compare the results. I have to say I'm genially impressed by them. All the manufacturers delivered excellent prints and from a meter away all these vases look stunning. Let's dive into details. Starting with the vase print using sunloose filament. Honestly, there's nothing to complain about here. It's a clean and precise print, producing a very polished result. However, I have to admit it doesn't give me a wooden feel. It looks more like regular PLA with some minor color irregulations. While the color is appealing and the overall quality is great, when it comes to deliver a convincing wood-like feeling, Sunlo falls short and ranks last for me. Moving on to Isun Mates filaments. The surface feels much more alive. There is a more natural texture and the print even smells like wood. Okay, it's more of a burnt wood smell, but still. As you recall, I enabled retraction for this filament and while the print quietly is excellent, there is still a slight bit of stringing visible on the surface. Perhaps increasing the retraction settings could fix this issue. Next we have the waste printed with Amolens filament, which is another standout to its dark color. Like the others, the layer lines are clean and consistent. However, besides some small flaws, the surface has a slightly more homogeneous and silky glossy finish compared to Ice Sun Meat. Unfortunately, this slight sheen detracts a bit from the wood illusion. Perhaps tweaking the temperature further could enhance the results. Finally, let's look at Bamboo's wooden filament. I was a bit surprised here because upon close inspection, this print has also some surface flaws. Granted, these are minor issues, but given the reduced volumetric flow from the default 18 to 8 cubic millimeters per second, I expected better. The color of the bumper print is slightly darker than Amolens, and while the surface has a subtle silky finish, it's not as pronounced as Amolens sheen. From a meter away, the bumper vase looks more convincingly wooden than Amolens. Worth to mention is that the bumper filament has noticeable less scent. This stands in stark contrast to the other three brands, all of which emitted a distinct burnt wood aroma, especially during printing. Conclusion for me, Isun Mate takes the top spot. Its slightly rough and textured surface offers the best wooden feel and the prominently burnt wood scent makes it stand out from the rest, feeling less like plastic. Second place goes to Bamboo. The print offers a better wood-like appearance than Amolan, which ranks on third place. Last place goes to Sunlu. To me, this feels more like beige PLA than a true wooden filament. While there is a faint burn wood smell, it doesn't enough to deliver a convincing wood effect. Alright folks, the festival final for today's adventure, some Christmas decoratives and multi-material printing. For the first print, I stumbled upon an absolutely adorable Christmas gnome on Maker World, designed by the talented Body 3D. We are rolling out the 4-color AMS version for this print. Once imported in Bamboo Studio, I trimmed away the version intended as keychain. Then I applied my trusty waste filament presets for Isun Mate and Amolan. For the color scheme, dark Amolan filament for the shoes and hat, Isun Mate for the nose and classic white for the beard. Very dashing if I say so myself. In the process settings I stuck with the designer's recommended wall generator mode, Arcana. I tweak a couple of things though. I switched the wall order to outer inner and activated void crossing walls. A completely unnecessary setting for this print, but hey, old habits die hard. Next, I kept most of the strength settings as the designer suggested. Top and bottom surface patterns were already concentric, infill was reduced to 5% and infill combination was enabled. Supports? Nope. Bream? Also nope. Simple and clean. For the white PLA filament settings, I reset everything to the defaults for generic PLA, 
then fine-tuned the volumetric flow to 8 cubic millimeters per second to accommodate my eSun upgraded mate PLA. After slicing, I noticed a clearing inconsistency in the speed profile, especially on the GNOME's iconic floppy head. Quick fix, I reduced the volumetric flow for both wood filaments to 2 cubic millimeters per second. Sliced again, and et voila, a beautiful consistent speed for the wooden areas. Printing time, a little over 10 hours. Material use, 100 grams in total. Unfortunately, we are going to waste 80% of the used filament, 65 gram for poop and 50 gram for the prime tower. Painful, but today's focus is on the wooden filaments, not on efficiency. The print runs smoothly and as it is finished we again have a closer look to the surface quality. Beautifully consistent, thanks to the even print speed. This little gnome is absolutely flawless, no visible transitions in the surface structure, just perfection in the filament form. Let's try something else. I tested another festive design from Maker World, this time by Aaron Posar. This ring gear model features long thin legs and require object modifiers to slow the outer and inner wall speed to 50 mm per second for stability. A smart move by the designer, but it comes with its own challenges. During slicing the speed differences are clearly visible, in numbers the difference is up to 30 mm per second, and during the print, stringing galore especially around the legs. Here's the unvanished truth. The untouched result looked like the aftermath of a spiderweb convention. My first attempt at cleanup involved a combination of determined nail work and some heat gum finesse. While it helped, the surface revealed clear signs of temperature issues caused by the speed transitions. Let's just say this isn't something I would proudly display at home. I became a little obsessed and printed several versions of this model, tweaking parameters endlessly. But I'm no tuning wizard, so diving deeper here didn't feel worth it. Instead, we are shifting to another charming multicolor model, a Santa Stato, also from Maker World by designer Sabre. The beauty of this design lies in the print per object mode, which allows to print each part sequentially in its respective material all on the same build plate. I stuck with my trusty Isonmet and Amoland filaments, paired with my waist settings for consistent results. The process settings remained the same as for the waists. Though, I did add a bream to Santa's head. Why? Because in my first attempt the part has come loose. Five hours later the printing was complete. After carefully removing the minimal supports and assembling the pieces, Santa emerged in all his festive glory, ready to spread holiday cheer. It's a quick, satisfying model that adds a bit of seasonal magic to any space. For those of you who haven't had enough, here's one last treat. A stunning Christmas tree model, also by Sabre. For this I switched gears and used waste mode. To ensure a consistent speed profile, I disabled slowdown for overhangs completely and reduced the outer wall speed to 50 mm per second. The result? A beautifully uniform print, completed in just under 5 hours. In my opinion this tree is a real showstopper, what do you think? And that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in, I hope you picked up a tip or two along the way. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment and hit that subscribe button for more creative projects. That's it from me for this year, wishing you all happy holidays with your loved ones, see you next year and until then, happy making!